Hi everybody, Joey here again and welcome back. So you know, one of my favorite things to do for you guys and show you is how you could easily turn common household items or other easy to find supplies into useful aquarium projects. For example, we've often taken water bottles and turned them into filters, skimmers, auto top offs and many other things. Or the time we took an old smoke alarm and turned it into a water detector. Now that was definitely a fun project. A couple of times we've even created different ways to make your own CO2 for your planted aquarium, including using sugar and yeast as one method, and then we used citric acid and baking soda as another method. There was even a time when we made our own emergency heater using calcium chloride and a water bottle, which actually doubled as a dehumidifier as well. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create pure oxygen for your aquarium. A bit of a backstory first though, just so you fully understand it. When I was younger, and even now, whenever I got a cut or a scrape, I would pour some hydrogen peroxide on it, which would disinfect the wound. Hydrogen peroxide is more simply known as peroxide. After doing so, the peroxide would always foam, and I always wondered why it was doing that. It actually turns out there's an enzyme within our cells that's a catalase. Now that catalase is a catalyst. So when the hydrogen peroxide comes in contact with the catalase, it breaks down the peroxide into water and pure oxygen. So that foam is actually oxygen gassing off. Now I probably lost you in all of that, but it was really important to talk about it. So let me put all of this in layman's terms in the ways that I actually understand it. I'll start with this example. When you purchase hydrogen peroxide, it actually has an expiry date on it. The reason for that is actually simple. When you open the bottle, it starts to go through its decomposition, turning into water and air, eventually just being a bottle of water. So like I said, hydrogen peroxide will go through a decomposition on its own. However, if we add that catalase to it, it speeds that process up tremendously. So it's pretty simple when you think about it. Now this catalase is actually found in many organic things, like a potato for example. So if we drop this potato into some peroxide, it will decompose the peroxide into pure oxygen and water. So fast in fact that we can capture that pure oxygen and use it. So what does any of this have to do with an aquarium hobbyist? Well, in an emergency situation, you might lose your power to your aquarium. You might not have a backup plan or equipment to deal with a power outage. And before you know it, your fish are gasping at the surface for air. It won't be long after that before you have a tank of dead fish. Now there are many ways to deal with a power outage and many things you can do, but at the end of the day, the fish just want some oxygen and it doesn't take long to deplete the aquarium of oxygen if we don't do something about it. So in a case like this, if we inject pure oxygen into the aquarium, even at a slow rate, this can make all the difference in your fish's survival. But why add pure oxygen? Well, for example, when we use an air stone and pump for your aquarium, we're actually pumping in air, not oxygen. They're not the same. You see, the air that we actually breathe is only 21% oxygen. The rest is mainly nitrogen and then a few other trace gases. I guess it makes more sense why one is called air and one is called oxygen now. With all of that aside, now what I want to show you is the actual project. And this is going to come in handy in a true emergency situation. When you grab a potato and some peroxide and use it, knowing what will happen if you combine the two, that will lead to saving your fish's life. You'll first need some hydrogen peroxide at 3%. A liter of this only cost me $2 and I got it at Walmart. You'll get it anywhere they sell band-aids, medicine, and that sort of thing. The 3% means the mixture is 3% peroxide and the rest is water. You'll also need a potato, but skin the potato first to expose the enzymes and cut it into cubes. Now studies have actually shown that by increasing the surface area of the potato, you'll speed up the rate of decomposition of the peroxide. I've personally found that using a half a potato to a cup of peroxide in a 500 milliliter bottle to be optimal. Next, drill a small hole in the water bottle cap. Five millimeters in diameter seems to be the best fit as this will create a tight seal around your six millimeter air hose that you're going to need to insert into it. Run the hose about one inch into the bottle. Attach an air stone to the other end and put it in your aquarium. Immediately, the decomposition of turning the peroxide into water and oxygen will begin. Within a few minutes, oxygen will fill up the bottle and the pressure will begin to build, forcing the oxygen out of the bottle and into your aquarium. Now this will continue on for at least four hours at the same rate, and it can take up to a full day for the peroxide to finish decomposing, at which time you'll be left with a bottle of potato flavored water with potatoes at the bottom. 
If you're worried about the foam that it creates getting into your aquarium or the peroxide itself getting into your aquarium, it's not really something you should worry about because the odds of that happening are slim. However, as a precaution, you could easily create a gas separator like you would for a CO2 system, which is as simple as grabbing another water bottle and making it out of that, like I've shown in other videos. Also, if you notice the bubbles are rising too fast and you're really not getting any benefits of adding pure oxygen, you might also want to create some sort of a diffuser, like one you would use on a CO2 system for a planted aquarium as well, which will ensure that you saturate the water better with that oxygen. So this is truly a very simple yet valuable project that will come in handy for many of you. However, if you didn't notice, I spent most of my time here helping you understand how it truly works, which is exactly how my book was written, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself Handbook for the Do-It-Yourself Aquarist. You can pick your copy up at thekingofdiy.com. Now your purchase directly supports this channel and everything that I do for you, so it's certainly appreciated and even needed. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I also wanted to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week for a new do-it-yourself project.